Alison, um, I'll take it away. Basically, I'm going to provide I'm the Salometer PTL, as Alison, as Alison said, and I'm going to provide a, an update on what we're planning to do over the Kilo release cycle. So next slide, please. We'll start with uh, just a little reminder. Um, and on slide two, I've got the mission statement that we agreed with the uh, with the technical committee over the previous cycle, and this provides uh, you know a, a, a fairly terse um, kind of uh, summary of what we're all about in Salometer. So I've kind of divided it up there in the slide, and the, the kind of the three phases of what we do. So the <clears throat> the purpose really is to surface insight into what's going on in your cloud. In order to do that, we need to collect measurements, basically, of how the, the physical and virtual resources that comprise your deployed cloud, and how they, these are being used, how they're performing, who's actually using them. And then these data, once collected, obviously, you know, in order for them to be put to use later on down the line, we need to persist these data so they can be subsequently retrieved and, and analyzed. And also, we need to be able to trigger actions when some defined criteria are met. And a really good example um, of, of that would be heat auto-scaling. So basically, heat auto-scaling is a mechanism whereby um, the, the content or the, the membership of a group of instances can be dynamically adjusted according to the trend in usage that's observed um, of those instances. And that's an example of where an action has been triggered by some data collection that Salometer um, is doing. And then the actual triggering of the action is, is, is basically driven by a feature of Salometer um, called alarming. So moving on to, to slide three, that's basically our, our mission. And the next thing really is how are we applying this mission over the period of the Juno release cycle? Well, here are the things um, on slide three. I've given a kind of a high-level laundry list of the things that we spent our time in Paris talking about when we weren't doing touristic stuff. We weren't um, traveling around looking at the Eiffel Tower much. Um, most of it was spent uh, in deep conversation in Conclave where we discussed basically our plans for the, the upcoming Kilo release cycle and came out with, with these set of prioritized teams that we're going to attack over, over the um, over the next six months. So the, the, the highest priority thing and the, the thing that we're really focusing on is completion of this new time series data as a service, the Noki project we're calling it, and the migration of Salometer to use that as its metric storage layer. So that's really going to consume a lot of our attention. And basically, it's been a multi-cycle effort. I'm going to talk in detail as to what it comprises, why we're doing it, uh, what the status is, and, and what the, 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 the remaining work looks like over Kilo. Um, but in addition to that, we've got, we've got other parallel efforts going on. And I'm going to provide a little bit of detail on, on each of these um, on this update. Now, one thing that, that's um, quite important that's happening across the board in, over Kilo in, um, in OpenStack is the idea of taking a lot of test coverage that was previously provided by Tempest, which is an integration and test suite that, that spins up a lot of services and it tests a lot of interactions between those services, moving a lot of that coverage so that it's now within the individual trees of the individual services. Um, with some other planned testing improvements as well that fall under that category of providing the right kind of test coverage. And um, I'll, I'll give a bit uh, more detail on that in, in, in a few minutes. The other thing we want to do is to basically make the segregation between tenants and the role-based access control in effect to make that configuration richer and more flexible in Salometer. Um, we want to reach a point in time at which the notifications that the other services emit, services such as um, Nova, Glance, Neutron, Keystone, etc., those notifications are currently consumed by um, Salometer. And we want to basically allow that notification-based interaction to become as contract-based and as stable as a, as a true API. So um, that will require some work both on the consumer side, in consumers such as Salometer and also related projects such as, say, StackDAC, but also a lot of change on the emitter side. So that, that's a, a very significant piece of work, and it's something that's been 
mooted many times. It's been kind of oft discussed but never actually delivered upon. So what we're really trying to do over Kilo is, is finally put that issue to bed and finally basically promote notification-based interactions so that they're kind of like first-class citizens in the open spec world. We have a number of um, improvements uh, on our roster around deployment flexibility. So ways in which the complexity of actually deploying a um, salometer, uh, the set of salometer agents over a you know non-trivial um, deployment of OpenStack, not just a you know a single node POC or something small like that, and um, how that that um, flexibility can be improved and the complexity reduced. Uh, we also have uh, a few improvements around how we process events. So currently, Salometer basically has two different ways on which data can be acquired. One is a kind of a, an act of going out and grabbing that data, a kind of a, a polling model, and the other is a more passive, kind of sitting back and, and allowing the services to tell us what's going on via um, notifications that are delivered over the Oslo messaging bus. And we've got a number of, of ways of improving how we actually process those notifications. And lastly, um, I've got a, a, um, a line item that's, that's kind of much, pretty much assigned to me, and that's collaboration with a very interesting and related project in the OpenStack ecosystem called Manaska. So Manaska are all about monitoring at a very large scale. It's uh, a project that grew out of an effort within HP uh, and now involves contributions from several different um, large OpenStack um, companies, including IBM and Rackspace. And you know, they're, they're somewhat complementary to what Solometer does, but also um, you know, they're, they're, there's some commonality there as well. And we're going to explore how we can kind of uh, collaborate with the Manaska folks and, and you know, where, where our interests align basically achieve things together. So let's drill down uh, in a bit more detail into each of these themes. So firstly, this time series data as a service, this Noki project, what's it all about? So first to recap, this is actually uh, very similar to a slide that I used in the PTL update for Juno. Um, and basically, I'm just recapping what Noki is all about. So the goal here is to provide efficient metric storage. So you may well ask the question, well, Solometer is obviously involved in storing metrics currently. Um, is that inherently inefficient? Well, there's a couple of kind of uh, drawbacks to the approach that Solometer currently takes. And one of those is the fact that we snapshot resource metadata alongside each individual data point that we store. Now, that provides an awful lot of flexibility, and it also provides a very good record of the evolution of the resource state, the timeline of that evolution. But the downside is that much of this metadata is either static or very rarely changing. So there's much more efficient ways of storing this near static information than continually snapshotting it alongside each, um, each individual data point. Um, the other thing that we, we, we want to change, we want to kind of upend the approach is Solometer, as classic Solometer to coin a phrase, is predicated on this idea of all aggregation being done on, on demand. If you issue a statistics query and you have a certain uh, bucketization that you want, for example, per hour, that um, aggregation is done on demand, on the fly, for each individual query. And if the same query is emitted a second later, it's, it's, it's done again. So what we want to do is shift to a model whereby we eagerly pre-aggregate and roll up these data as they're being ingested. So that's the, those are the key differences really between how um, we view this time series data as a service playing out. It's been um, implemented uh, initially at arm's length from Solometer via a project that was um, spun up on Stackforge by my predecessor, Julien Donjou, my predecessor as, as PTL of the Solometer project. And it was envisaged from the get-go as kind of a multi-cycle effort that, we would, um, that would play out over Juno and Kilo. And that we get to a point uh, at the conclusion of Kilo whereby we were ready to migrate um, Solometer core to using Noki as its primary metric storage layer. So currently, um, there is a canonical analytics and, and storage engine provided by Noki, which is based on the Pandas analytics library. It's a commonly used analytics, data analytics library in, in uh, Python and using Swift as the storage backend. But our intent is to um, also provide alternative storage drivers. So we follow the standard OpenStack pluggable model. 
And the idea is that we'll have alternative drivers based on other specialized metrics-oriented databases such as InfluxDB and OpenTSDB. They're, those are the two that we're currently actively working on. So that's kind of a, a recap of you know, where Noki came from. So where is it at currently? What's the status? So moving on to slide five, um, I've listed there basically just a, a kind of a laundry list of the, what we've achieved so far and what's currently in flight as far as, as um, you know, fairly coarse-grained functional areas of, of Nokia are concerned. So completed, um, we've got the Core Metrics and Resources API. Um, so it's a, a REST API in the, in the typical um, OpenStack style. And basically, it's going to form the kernel of the V3 Solometer API. We also have a single storage driver that's completely built out that's based on Pandas and Swift, as I said. We've also got the aggregation model and a policy-based model that determines what um, level of aggregation and how the rollup occurs for, for each individual metric. It's a, it's a fairly rich model because you can um, attach different policies to, to different metrics and have different levels of expiry and time to live related to different metrics. We've got a dispatch mechanism in place within the Solometer Collector service. And this is a API-based model. And by that, I mean that the dispatcher uses the REST API to push the metric data points up to the time series as a, as a, the time series data as a service um, API. And, and the intent basically was for that to be the, the kind of proof of concept, the proof that you know, Solometer data could be stored and retrieved um, from this new Noki service. But um, as, as I'll, I'll, I'll mention later, we've got an alternative, more efficient um, dispatch model in mind where the Noki storage driver effectively runs in process within the Solometer collector service. And we also have the Keystone integration piece all done. So the, you know, the typical kind of um, uh, call out to the authentication layer, and also the um, out-of-the-box uh, role-based access control policies. Now, in progress, we've got our two alternative storage drivers, one that's based on OpenTSDB, which is a, a moderately widely used um, metrics-oriented database that's based on HBase, so it's a type of thing that one would run over an Hadoop cluster. And then also InfluxDB, which is a very interesting um, database that's implemented in Golang that, um, you know, it, it's again uh, specialized for metric storage and provides native features around downsampling of, of, um, of uh, data points and is, is, is highly optimized for this particular type of um, storage problem. We've got uh, some logic around custom aggregation whereby you can have pluggable components that basically uh, provide additional aggregation logic. So clearly we're going to have our, our basic um, aggregation functions uh, defined, things like maximum, minima, and averages, and sums, and counts, and even more exotic things like um, standard deviations. But sometimes you want, to, you want to go even further than that. So we've got a custom aggregation layer uh, in, in progress being implemented, and a number of an example uh, applications of this, including moving averages and also host winters uh, forecasting. Um, another thing that's in progress that's, that's quite interesting and will be crucial for our alarming integration is the ability to do cross-entity aggregation. So by that I mean the ability to aggregate data points that have originated from different resources. So you can say either give me the CPU utilization for this individual instance or else give me the average CPU utilization over a group of related instances. For example, the instances that make up a, um, an auto-scaling group as defined by heat. Um, and lastly there, we've got, a, which I mentioned earlier, we've got in progress an effort towards providing an alternative dispatch model from the Solometer Collector Service that's basically in-processed as opposed to uh, API-based. So in that case, the collector would lo load the Noki storage driver and call out directly to InfluxDB or Pandas plus Swift or OpenTSDB or whatever it is, as opposed to making a direct invocation on the REST API. So that's kind of where we're at as far as Noki is concerned. So what, what additional work have we planned for, for, for Kilo? So basically, our key, um, our 
the crucial things that need to be achieved before we can declare victory on this. We need to recast the V2 query API, which um, allows you to basically slice and dice um, salometer data in many different ways. We need to recast that over Doki semantics so that it takes account of the restrictions that would be imposed by this model of not snapshotting resource metadata for each individual and sample data point. And remember, having putting that restriction in place is key to making the um, salometer uh, metric storage strategy, making that massively scalable. We also need to rebase the salometer alarm evaluation uh, logic on the V3 metrics API. So this will be effectively the, the retrieval API that, that Noki um, supports. We need to provide a logic to allow customers to take pre-existing um, metering stores. So a customer, for example, or a user who basically had a deployment of Salometer running for some time and was using the classic Salometer uh, storage um, layer, we need some way of capturing that data and basically extracting it and distilling it and basically presenting it up then as um, equivalent data to the way uh, Noki actually stores in pre-aggregated rolled up form. And lastly, in order to, uh, I suppose, make clear the benefits of, of using this alternative storage strategy, we're, we've already done quite a lot of profiling and um, with a lot of uh, potential optimization that we're going to attack over Kilo. And finally, we're going to publish all of these results and indicate the, the, the potential benefits so that people are very sure before they, they switch from classic salometer to using the Noki storage um, layer as an alternative. Now, of course, the classic salometer way of doing things will be maintained on a deprecation path. And um, the standard in OpenStack would be for something like this to maintain for at least two cycles going forward. So it's not something that we're going to pull the rug under, out from under um, existing Salometer users. Uh, there will be a, you know, a long transitionary phase, and, and basically people will be given plenty of notice. But of course, it's always good to have a very solid case for uh, early adopters to move forward. And that's what we intend this, this detailed performance profiling and effort to, to provide. So in addition to that, we've got a bunch of other parallel efforts that are, that are unrelated to the, um, the Noki project. Um, I spoke about these in, in fairly broad terms. I'll give a, a little bit more detail now. So in terms of testing, what do we want to move to? Well, we want to uh, follow the, the trend that's, that's happening right across OpenStack of moving a lot of our coverage out from this kind of global uh, Tempest test suite into functional tests that are more directly associated with our project um, repo. So we're calling these in-tree functional tests in the sense that they, they, they live alongside the actual code that's been tested in, in, in the same Git repository. And this will allow us basically to not be as restricted in terms of how these integrated integration tests are actually constructed. So, uh, you know, a, a good Tempest test is, is, a, is a pure black box test. It doesn't assume anything about the um, underpinning implementation. Whereas we want to be able to test things in more of a kind of a, a gray box method. We want to be able to make assumptions about the internal implementation. We want to be able to write tests that do things like accelerate the metrics gathering cadence that Salometer uses so that the, the test can complete in, in a reasonable time. So we want to, for example, change uh, you know, some configuration option that causes some Salometer agent to um, gather data points at a, at a much faster rate than it normally does, and then uh, make some kind of assertions around the metric data points that have been gathered, and do that all within a reasonable time. We also want to basically produce a set, a set of, of API tests that are much more declarative in form, that, for, that basically provide kind of du dual duty um, such that you could read the tests. They're unencumbered by lots of um, complex Python code. And instead, as well as providing test coverage, provide a, you know, an almost organic form of documentation of how the API is intended to actually be used and you know, how, it, how the, the, the form of, of requests and responses, but in, in a very kind of high level and digestible form. And lastly, we want to use um, the Rally test framework 
to basically introduce scenario tests. So these are tests that basically in induce some workload over Solometer and then basically measure the results in effect. And that will basically allow us to, to measure performance improvements uh, in a very convenient way and also allow us to, to basically watch out for performance degradations where they occur and to catch those early. Another area that we're going to dig into is this whole uh, configuration of segregation between tenants. So up to now, there's been a kind of an all or nothing model in Solometer between um, basically users who have, have the admin role and users who are non-admin. So admin users can see all. They're omniscient. They basically, everything is visible to them uh, as far as Solometer is concerned. Whereas normal users can only see the data and can only reason over that data and alarm on that data that's associated with the, the resources that they themselves own. So that's kind of, I mean, it's, it's useful in terms of, of um, tenant segregation, but it's, it's very kind of um, absolute. It, uh, whereas we want to have a much more kind of nuanced model and use the role-based access control mechanism that um, OpenStack provides and basically to start leveraging the more forward-looking um, features of Keystone, including this idea of domains. So this notion that the administrative role isn't something necessarily global, but it's something that can be uh, partitioned between different related groups of users um, via, via this notion of domains. We have a number of different uh, improvements around deployment flexibility. So we're going to merge our very simple, uh, our very similar central and compute agents so that we have a single polling agent that can be run in, in a similar mode to the current central agent or compute agent or can do dual duty. And that will make um, small deployments more simple. We want to basically be able to centralize the storage of the pipeline configuration, which is currently stored in a flat file that needs to be rolled out to each individual node. It's the pipeline that YAML, that existing Solometer users would uh, know and love. And we want to basically allow that to be centrally stored so that it can be changed in a, in a, in a more global fashion um, across uh, large deployments. And we also want to, uh, one thing that, another thing that will make deployment simpler is this idea of allowing the metrics gathering uh, over SNMP to be cur truly declarative, to be driven by config, so that you can decide which SNMP metrics you're interested in and change those on the fly very easily. Uh, smaller parallel efforts, uh, we want notifications that are emitted by services such as Nova, Neutron, Glance, etc. to be, I mean currently these are essentially just freeform dic dictionaries. Uh, there's no contract involved, there's no stability. So we want to um, go ahead and schematize all of those and we're doing that as a joint effort with um, some folks from the, the StackDoc project which is a, a related project in the uh, OpenStack ecosystem that's also alongside Solometer, probably the primary consumer of notifications. We're going to improve our events pipeline so that the events database is completely split off from the uh, metrics database so you can decide to store your events, for example, in Mongo and store your um, data points, for example, in Noki or in HBase or wherever, you know, any of the other storage drivers that are supported by Solometer. And we're also going to use the same model of coordination between scaled out notification agents. This is the agent in Solometer that's responsible for consuming events as we currently use for the central agent and the compute agent where we want to um, provide a kind of a mutually exclusive partitioning between individual um, agents such that they don't step on each other's toes and they don't duplicate work, but yet and no work also falls through the cracks. And that can be done in a way that takes account of the fact that the, the pool of currently running agents can change over time. And lastly, we've got a couple of um, line items around collaboration with the related Manaska project. So I'm currently working on um, figuring out if we can uh, reuse or leverage somehow their uh, anomaly detection engine, which is a very interesting component in Manaska that we don't have a, a direct analog of in Solometer. We both have a common concern around InfluxDB. Uh, they're using InfluxDB as a, one of their um, storage options, and we also intend to do so for NoKeep. So we have common concerns, for example, around getting Influx into the continuous integration gate upstream. And lastly, um, Manaska are using Apache Kafka um, as their kind of high throughput uh, internal messaging bus. And that's something that, that, that Solometer could learn from. We use uh, Oslo messaging both for external and internal messaging. And basically, uh, Apache Kafka provides several kind of benefits around um, throughput and um, scale, etc. So, uh, just my, my final slide here is just emphasizing the point that uh, we're available for 
uh, you guys to you know anyone who has any further questions or wants to kind of uh, any more depth on any of these topics to reach out either on IRC on our hash OpenStack Solometer channel, or you can you can ping me directly over IRC on eglin at, at Freenode, and my home time zone is GMT, so you know take that into account if you're if you're wanting to chat over over IRC. We have our weekly meeting at 1500 UTC on a Thursday, so you can join that if you want to if you want to go deeper with any of these discussions. And of course, we've got the OpenStack Dev and mailing list. So that kind of concludes my uh, my update. Uh,